And we now come to the statement of uh, Mr. Anatoly Shubais. He's from Russia and was appointed CEO of Rasnano in 2008. From 1998 to 2008, he was also chairman of the management board of the Unified Energy System of Russia. And during his earlier years of government service, he has held several positions. I just mentioned that he was first deputy prime minister of Russia and minister of finance simultaneously. Uh, Mr. Shubais has been Russia's co-chairman of the EU-Russia Industrialist Roundtable since 2000, and he earned his PhD in economics. Okay, Mr. Shubais, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And dear ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and privilege to speak here. And I believe that uh, what we should discuss first that the major challenges major challenges for the uh, mankind, for the planet, which we feel in any country presenting here. Yesterday on this forum, on the plenary session, uh, there was speakers who told about the food, water, energy shortages, and uh, those shortages are even become stronger and stronger because, because of increasing human population, and that's definitely true. We all know that just uh, one year ago, last October, the human population exceeds seven billion people versus two billion at the beginning of 20th century. We all know that metal consumption exists 30 billion ton against 0 0.6 at the beginning of 20th century. Energy consumption, almost 20 billion ton versus 0 0.2 at the beginning of 20th century. And as a result, it was told yesterday from this panel, uh, the CO2 concentration now for 50% more in the planet atmosphere than it was at the beginning of 20th century. And definitely, uh, we have to pay tribute to the great people who was achieved in the city of Kyoto, in this whole uh, Kyoto Protocol, which is probably one of the greatest achievement which was done to prevent the global catastrophe. But at the same time, we may ask, does it solve the problem? We know that by 2025, the energy consumption will increase for another 50%, and we know that the uh, CO2 concentration by 2025 will increase for about 40, 45 percent. It means that the problem is not solved. It means that the center point of the problem, that's the unlimited growth of consumption versus limited resources. What are the solutions? Can internet solve this problem? Can social media solve this problem? Can iPhone or iPad solve this problem? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't think that the whole international communication technology or ICT industry able to solve this problem because they not helping us to meet this challenge, which becomes stronger and stronger in any countries. And that's the real global changes. Where should we look looking for solutions, if not ICT, if not internet, if not computer? I think that we have just to, let's look around. What does all the uh, buildings and equipment consist from. That's three basic materials, metal, plastic, and cement. And we are so accustomed to it that we don't feel that something wrong, something wrong with it. We may applaud to the scientists or engineers who was able to 
increase the efficiency of, I don't know, diesel engine for 0.2 percent. And that's real achievement. It's not easy to, to do it. But at the same time, these diesel are part of the car with the weight for about <coughs> 2,000 kilograms who may carry only, say, five people for 100 kilograms each for 500 kilograms, which means that the efficiency of the car is 25 percent. If we would be able to get some materials with the more strength, it will definitely help us to solve this problem. We know that in this building, 90 percent of strength for carrying the building itself, and only 10 percent for carrying the everything which was the purpose for building this, constructing this building. We know that in any bridge, 80 percent of strength for carrying the bridge itself. It means that in case if uh, engineers, scientists will be able to suggest materials, basic materials, with much more physical strength, with much more mechanical strength, it's something which may really change the world. How it can be achieved? Are such materials are existing? We know that in this country, in Japan, in 1991, Japanese professor Iijima invented carbon nanotubes. We know that in 1996, American professor Richard Smalley with his colleagues get the Nobel Prize for fullerene. And we know that just two years ago, in 2010, two uh, Russian professors uh, based in London, Andrei Game and Konstantin Novoselov, they got the Nobel Prize for graphene. And uh, we all know about these carbon nanomaterials, that they are obtain absolutely unique properties. Carbon nanotubes has strength two, sorry, not two, 20, 20 fold of steel. Electric conductivity, 1,000 fold of copper. Specific gravity, two fold less than aluminum. And uh, if we use them just as additive, <coughs> only 3% <three> <coughs> of carbon nanotubes makes aluminum more strength than titanium. We know that only 2% of carbon nanotubes can make plastic ultra, ultra strength and uh, conductive for electricity. It means that those kind of additives and those kind of materials being added to the basic materials, metal, plastic and cement may really change the basic properties of everything which is constructed and engineering in our planet. And definitely uh, what we need here is not only mega science, which is definitely a big achievement, but mega businesses, because we are speaking about the industries with the 100 million tons annual production. And if we want to change, if we want to meet the challenges, the global challenges I've started my report, we need to speak not about the kilograms. We need to speak about 100 million tons. And I think that on this direction, which is not definitely the panacea, but that is something which may address the challenge. And I know that my country, Russia, may contribute in these uh, global efforts. We already invested in Russia tens of millions of dollars in uh, science and in businesses in uh, carbon nanotube manufacturing. And the major challenges are two. First, scaling up industrial technology for manufacturing. And the second, to elaborate the application in the metallurgy, in chemistry, in construction materials, 
So those are two basic challenges which may really change the uh, real situation with the uh, global resources limits. Again, it's not a panacea, but I believe that uh, this topic is not attracting as much attention as it should be. If we're speaking about the global challenges, to my knowledge, that's one of the most important of those challenges which is existing now, and that's maybe the real way to address this challenge. Yesterday on this uh, panel, uh, there was a wonderful expression, I like it very much. Action without vision is nightmare. Uh, it was so stimulating that I decided to develop and to transform it. And I would like to say that vision without action is just entertainment. What we really need is action, and that's time to act. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Shubais. 